Fiction is a vehicle for conveying ideas. It's a very engaging vehicle. It also embraces the imagination of men and women and children. So it's a very powerful tool. It can be used for good or evil. It's simply a tool, but it's one that Christians are not using as well as they could, particularly in the arena of Christian scholarship, where you really fall down in this area. And I believe that we need to address that because we're leaving this tool on the table unused. We're leaving, as they say, important assets on the table that would make a huge difference in taking the truth to the people. Because we are all involved in scholarship at Cal Seton, but it's not just ivory tower scholarship. It exists for the purpose of being applied, for taking the word of a God and applying it to all areas of life and thought. And that includes fiction, which is an area of thought. That needs to be captured too. Even fiction can be captured to the obedience of Christ and made a tool in the service of the king and not necessarily only a tool that's mediocrely handled or is simply the province of the unbeliever. So we want to say this is not only an area where the believer can triumph, as our Lord even himself used fiction and stories and parables to convey truth, uh, becomes, because it gets the camel's nose under the tent, as we like to say. And, and that's an important aspect of getting the truth in. It is packaged in a way that makes it compelling, where people can then see the application. It's one, I, one thing to couch an idea as an academic concept. There's another idea to actually see it played out in the course of a story that the drama and the tension between good and evil, light and dark, right and wrong, truth and falsehood, come into play. And all good fiction is involved in that, uh, I guess we would call it the antithesis between good and evil, between God and the devil, between light and darkness, and how that plays out in the cultural realm. If there is no fi uh, friction, there's no fiction, basically. Yeah, that's the whole point. So we want to take this vehicle and do things with it that weren't done in, well in the past. And I'm not saying simply to take fiction and say, let's take our mediocre evangelistic techniques and then embed them in fiction. We see it a lot. Christians doing exactly that. And they know no better because they don't have a strong theology. So we'd expect weak theologies to be embedded in relatively weak storytelling or storytelling that is in the service of a weak theology that doesn't get anything more than a narrow piece of the faith put across. We believe that the entirety of the Christian faith, the whole Bible, is to be applied totalistically, we like to say, and therefore every single part, the warp and woof of a story can be biblically based, so much so that it's compelling and people then are brought into the story and seeing how the Christian worldview actually plays out in the fictional domain. And that's huge. If you go down this path, you can suddenly get people thinking. And the coin drops and the light goes on. It may not have gone on in any other way. I think the Lord used parables for this reason because it got the light to go on for those who had ears to hear. And so too, these stories uh, can be used for that purpose. We didn't just say, let's build stories and start there. We have a legacy going back to 1965. And earlier, if you look at the earlier writings of our founder, R.J. Rushdoony, to the late 50s of establishing a foundation in fact, in an application, in exposition, in exegesis, in theological extension and exposition. So we had that foundation first. We waited 45 plus years before we looked at fiction. So we had a firm foundation. It would have been insane for us to say, oh, we are now have the light turned on. We're going to start writing fiction without a foundation. And it'll show. I mean, you know, God will discover the un uh, whitewashed mortar, the untempered mortar there, to use Ezekiel's term, and say, hey, this is going to fall apart real fast because they jumped the gun. They didn't have the foundation. They didn't count the cost, which is having a complete totalistic worldview that is absolutely sold out to the authority of Scripture, to God, on every count, including things that most normally aren't considered. So these stories then should contain the things that we would not expect in the story. We expect some level of perhaps a conversion experience, but that's all we seem to get out in Christian fiction. And I want to turn that on its head. I want to say that, as Erskine says, is the alphabet. That's just the starting point. Where do we go from there? How do we develop the faith? How do we move from children to men? And how does the story explain that process? How does it contrast this growth in the Christian life and in the cultural transformations that we would expect when the faith is applied without compromise? And that's what we're all about at Chalcedon, and that's what this movement to fiction is going to be, is to take these ideas and popularize them, not just as a nonfiction, which is uh, worthy in itself, but in such a way that the ideas grab the imagination of men.
not just their mind, but engage their emotions, because then they can see the implications of an idea. And it can be put on the testing ground of a fictional world and not necessarily having terrible errors and mistakes made in the real world. We can then see, this is what happens when these ideas are put in play, because then the imagination of the writer, which is consecrated to God's kingdom, uh, is able to paint the picture. And that painted picture then sets forth uh, what the reality ought to look like. And we have this even with prophecy in the Bible, is depicting things in advance of happening. And therefore we get the imagination, we start to enter into the excitement of the prophet when he sees a time when they shall neither hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be as full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. That's a vision, and it's told in the character of a story, but it is nonetheless absolutely true. And so too, these stories that are being crafted by various men who have embraced this position, uh, the totality of the faith being applicable to everything, are going to change the way storytelling is done. Certainly that's exactly what we intend to do. We, we are proposing nothing less than the complete transformation of how storytelling ought to be and how to bring the entirety of the biblical faith into play, not just in this little area of the salvation of this individual or an ethical question that's st stuck in the Old or New Testament primarily, but rather the entirety of the Word of God coming into play, the parts of it that are generally neglected coming into play, and in a powerful way, so that people can say, see that the psalmist is right, that thy commandment is exceedingly broad. It applies to everything. And for that purpose, we have now made the move into fiction. We've covered every potential nonfiction topic already. There was not much ground left to cover there. It's time to move into fiction and to take that captive to Christ.